thank you so much for joining me. Um, some information at the top of the session. My name is Helen Mary Sheridan. I'm the data services librarian at the Health Sciences Library System, um, which means that I work with researchers from across the health sciences who are interested in uh, curating their data in a way that makes their science more reproducible. So that could be help with storing their data, describing it, sharing it, enabling reuse with their data, complying with funder and publisher mandates to do that with their data, and then also data reuse. So let's say that you want to use someone else's data. How do you negotiate the legal, ethical, and scientific questions that, that come with it? So what we're going to talk about today um, are some basics. So about the library, what do we have to offer you? Uh, that includes physical and online resources, instruction services, and more how you would navigate the H HSLS website, because that's really your primary portal now uh, to accessing the library services. Who are the liaison librarians? So if you are a member of a school, you have a personal librarian who is familiar with the workings of your discipline. Then specialized services, so that's my own team, data services, and also the molecular biology information service, and we work really cross school. Remote resources and physical spaces, so right now, again, we're mostly working from home, but there are physical spaces open in the library. So what you can expect from that, some information about contacting us, and then at the end, any questions that we don't address throughout, that's when we would do it. All right, so HSLS, what are we doing for you? Our mission is to help advancing an education. So that goes for graduate students, that is postdocs, that is for faculty members to increase their research experience and clinical excellence. Our faculty and staff strive to provide you with support and guidance throughout your education journey, which means things like, I need to learn how to um, optimize my art studio workflow so that my code uh, is intelligible to other researchers. We can help you with that. You know, it goes beyond just, this is where I go to get access to books and journals. Through systematic reviews, advanced literature searching, hands-on workshops, customized trainings, HSLS is here to provide support with your research. And that's something that we're really trying to experiment with right now um, because of ooh, moments like the current one where hands-on workshops mean something different than it used to, right? We can't necessarily all be in a classroom together, but maybe we can flip that model. Maybe we can provide resources so that you can learn at home and then we all come together virtually to share what we learned, do peer review, critique, uh, work through exercises together. So we are trying to push excellence along wherever that might take us. Our instructors provide hands-on classes and workshops throughout professional development. So it can be things like, you know, hey, what is HSLS? Uh, how do I work with our studio? Like I mentioned, it could be something like, if you want to launch a journal yourself or you want to make visual abstracts, maybe you want to learn how to use Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Photoshop, and you can learn those at HSLS. Classes like EndNote, PubMed, Distiller aid the curriculum of your current and future studies. So I tell people, you know, the best thing you can do in the first year of study is learn a citation manager, for example, so like EndNote, because that just makes the rest of your research career uh, so much easier. So you can manage what you're reading in classes and then what you're reading for your own research. All of our upcoming classes are listed on our online calendar um, and classes can be customized and taught on request. So we have a long, long list of all the classes we've ever taught. We are happy to customize that. So if this class doesn't address something that you have questions about, reach out to us. Um, so I know that someone in the chat is saying that her position is a little different than many others. The kind of support that she does is maybe a little broader or a little even more specific to people's individual cases. We can customize things to that. Um, I wanna call out in particular PubMed. So this is not a searching class. We're going to show you very briefly the search interface on the HSLS website, but it's not a class on how to find information. But if you are interested in developing better search habits and learning how to use the search resources that we provide to you, Painless PubMed is probably where you'd want to start. PubMed, of course, you know, this is a, this is a, a catalog of scientific and medical papers that are published. It is not the end-all be-all. Um, you are going to want to find resources other than that. 
but it's really a hands-on, how do we use this resource? How do we develop search strategies? Course that will serve you well, even if you end up using it, using those techniques in other settings. So one thing that comes up is how are we different from Hillman? Um, Hillman Library is the big brutalist building at the bottom of the hill, right over by Shenley Plaza. We support the health science schools directly. So that's nursing, dental, pharmacy, public health, medicine, health and rehabilitation. Uh, we have, in some cases, are embedded in those schools. We are familiar with the faculty. We're familiar with the protocols there. Um, really, we work together with Hillman very tightly. So if someone goes to Hillman first and really they're a school of medicine person, for example, Hillman will refer them back to us. If there is someone who is in history of science and comes to us, we will refer them to Hillman. But in cases where really what you're doing is interdisciplinary, we work together all the time. So we are happy to coordinate. So our services and resources are focused and tailored for those specific audiences. Sometimes you would need to actually be a member of one of those health science schools in order to use our services. And that comes up really when it's something that the library pays for. Um, so molecular biology, for example, does some restrictions with that. But really, we're focused on benefits here, not restrictions, right? So liaison librarians have special knowledge in those health information resources. But again, we love Hillman folks. We work together all the time. It's a good relationship. So next up is navigating the HSLS website. So this, I'm going to do a little live demo. I'm going to exit this. And you should still be able to see my screen. And now we are at the Health Sciences Library System. So this might look a little different depending on how much you have used the HSLS website before, because we did have a redesign fairly recently. Um, and of course, this is all different because the library switched catalog systems, not just us, Hillman too. Uh, but the catalog that was supporting our resources is now different. So even if this looks the same, it's on top of a new system. We'll talk a little bit about that. But I want to show you a couple of things that are really important. So one is if you scroll down the main page here, all upcoming classes and events, this is where you find our calendar. You can see all of the classes that we do. If you click this little arrow, it shows you more details. You can also, I mentioned, access that full list of HSLS classes over here. Feel free to request us teaching any version of this customized for faculty group, a lab, uh, you know, a coffee hour that you have with your colleagues. We, uh, we love to talk to different groups so we can customize that for you. Okay, and then if we're going back here, and let's say we want to access e-journals, right? So I know that I want to look at a particular journal. Well, I'm not gonna be able to just go there. I'm going to, at some point, need to log in as an authorized user. So let's just go ahead and do that off the bat. So right up here in the top right corner, it says remote access, we click that button. And here it says PIT users. PIT's remote access provides access to most HSLS and online resources. Uh, and then UPMC, you're encouraged to use the other UPMC portal. But what you would do is you would click PIT's remote access, and it would take you to that whole sign in here. You would go through, you'd get your two-factor authentication, and then you would be able to access resources through the library website. So I recommend doing that first uh, so that you don't get prompted a dozen times through the process if you're opening everything in a new tab like I tend to do. Okay, um, other things to see here is if you want to contact a librarian, you can click this nice little Ask a Librarian button. And this has a couple ways to get in touch with you or with us. Uh, you could submit this form. So you see questions will typically receive a response within 24 hours. So this goes to a queue uh, of emails, but we will respond. You can also try the live chat here. And this goes to whatever liaison librarian is on the reference desk at that time. So let's say you have a question about public health. You may not get connected to the public health librarian if she's not on the desk at that time but you will talk to a genuine reference librarian who will be able to either answer your question or refer you on to someone who can work with you more in depth. Uh, and then right now, because the main desk is open, if you call this number right up here, 648-8866, you'll be connected to the main desk, in which case 
they will probably, you know, they, they can connect you to someone, a reference librarian, but they can also answer basic questions like, is the library open? What can I do at the front desk? Things like that. So you have all of those options. And next, to talk about accessing resources and searching, I'm gonna introduce you to Rose Turner. Uh, and actually I will let her introduce herself because she can, I think, do a much better job. But I'm gonna stop sharing and I will turn it over to Rose. All right, hi everyone. You can see my screen and hear me, right? Yes. Okay, great. Um, again, so I'm Rose Turner. I am a research and instruction librarian. I'm also the uh, coordinator of liaison services. Um, uh, a lot of times if you're clicking that chat button or looking for a reference librarian, you might uh, be talking to me. So one of the things I know that people need to do a lot when they're accessing the library um, is basically you're looking for information. Um, so the library website is going to be your portal to maybe an article that you need or a database that you want to be searching in. Um, and there are a few different ways that you might go about um, accessing the information you need depending on what your question is and what kind of things that you need. So on our website right here, um, there's a big search box in the middle. So very inviting. Um, and like Helen Mary said, basically, if you're used to searching on the library website or using the library website, uh, you may have been in the past sort of pointed away from this big search box, uh, unless you're looking for a journal or database. And now it's gotten actually a little bit better, so you can use it for other things, um, which I'll talk to you a little bit about that. Uh, but basically, the first search box is going to be searching for any resources that we license. Um, so that's why it says e-journals, books, videos, and all pit libraries. And now you can actually search for some articles in this box as well. If you change the tabs, um, you can also search our ebook full text or bio preprints. So ebook full text is nice if you're looking for sort of background information or you want to find um, a complimentary textbook for your class or something like that, um, searching the full text. So it takes a little bit, like a minute or so, to sort of run through that. Um, so I won't demo, demo it, but that's nice. Um, you don't have to just find something in the table of contents of the ebook. It's going to be in the whole thing. So it'll point you to like a specific chapter, which will be nice. Uh, so pit resources. So if you're looking for articles, I might actually point you to a database like PubMed. Um, so I prefer searching in PubMed or one of the other databases just because you sort of get a more comprehensive view of what's out there. But again, it really depends on what you need. So I encourage you if you're sort of thinking about where to go just to talk to a librarian. Um, and if you're starting to search in databases like PubMed, maybe taking a PubMed class or, or checking out some tutorials. But this box right here is going to search our resources again. Um, so I think it's really good if you're looking for um, a journal. So Helen Mary sort of briefly showed you our list of journals here, but this is also a really nice place where you can come and, you know, hey, I want to look at the most recent version of the Lancet. And when I go to the Lancet website, it tells me to pay $200 or whatever to look at an article or look at their issue. So do your remote access thing, type in the Lancet here, and then click search. So this is basically bringing you to our catalog results. Um, you can use all the filters on the left similarly to you know, other places that you might search. Um, it might ask you to sign in again, uh, but we'll ignore that for now. And I'm going to basically just check out and see how I can access the Lancet from our website. So I'll see, um, here's the Lancet, that's what I'm looking for. Here's a little link that says available online. So I'm gonna click on that. And that basically just brings me to all of my online access options. Check out the dates here. So you'll see if I click on this link, it's only going to be those really old issues. But if I click on this third link, it's going to be anything from 2007 on. Usually you don't see so many access options, but um, this is the special case. So now I'm basically at a place where I can access um, recent issues of The Lancet and read through them. 
if that link doesn't work, you can basically access through any of those links, like I said. Um, and you'll also notice there's sometimes another thing that says available at Falk Library or available at Falk Library um, storage. So that's going to be a physical copy of that journal. And more and more, obviously, we're looking at the electronic copies. So this is also a place where, again, you can look for books. You can look for um, journal articles as well. So just doing a quick search in here, this is something that I would do typically in PubMed. But you will find articles and you may find something relevant in here. So that's the search box on the HSLS website. Again, PubMed is sort of the other place I would go to specifically look for articles. They're indexed and a little bit easier to find. So it's easier to focus in on what you need. And again, we're all here. We can help you if you get stuck. I always say, you know, we're really, everyone's really good at finding information now. So maybe you don't need to reach out right away. But if you're stuck after five to 10 minutes, please just hit us up and we're happy to give you some tips or help you find what you need. All right. Um, so I'm going to switch it back to Helen Mary. Thank you so much, Rose. All right. Rose mentioned that we are all very good at finding information, um, which I would say is more true for some of the other liaison librarians because than me, because I am not necessarily a reference librarian, but uh, I'm good at finding data if you need that. Uh, I just wanted to introduce you to some of our liaison librarians. So since we couldn't have everyone here in this video, uh, I will do a quick introduction. What is a liaison librarian? Uh, we're faculty librarians integrated into undergraduate and graduate programs in all schools of the health sciences. And that now includes the School of Medicine, which wasn't previously really the case. So that's an exciting new development for us. Liaison librarians collaborate with faculty and other professionals to support research, uh, instruction, and scholarship, which means we are happy to come in and guest lecture in a class, uh, to co-teach, to work on grants, to do research together. Any sort of collaborative project uh, is really wonderful for us. And then each liaison librarian has a close relationship with his or her associated school and understands the unique needs of students and faculty in that school. So several of our liaison librarians have degrees in those programs. Um, and then if that's not necessarily the case, then they have a long history of working very closely with researchers in that school. So I mentioned they could collaborate on research projects. They could provide formal instruction library workshops, informal instruction, guest lectures, uh, come and speak to journal clubs, really anything you can imagine. Uh, a big thing is contributing as co-investigators on systematic reviews. So you want to put together, you know, the, the right filters and search strings, you need a librarian. Providing assistance with researching health, excuse me, and biomedical topics. And then meeting the changing needs and expectations for physician education and information. So that physician and clinical focused, uh, you know, what are you going to need in the field? And that changing needs part, is really reflecting in uh, reflected in what we're trying to do digitally too, I would say, is experimenting with new technologies. So HSLS now has a VR lab and you know, the liaison librarians are working to figure out how does that fit into each school? How can we you know, partner with folks who want to use this technology? But an actual liaison librarian can say it better than me. So this is Rebecca Miller. As a liaison librarian, I am a resource for faculty, students, and staff uh, using the library. So if they have questions from anything uh, from either finding full text of an article or using a database uh, or even signing up for library classes, I'm here to help with that. I also work on in-depth projects like systematic reviews or other advanced literature searching. And I go into classes and teach things like information literacy and how to use some of our databases. One project that I have been working on fairly recently is working with the Doctor of Nursing Practice students uh, in the School of Nursing. So these are nurse anesthesia students and for their capstone projects that they have to do literature reviews. So we meet and talk about what they've found so far, any difficulties they're having, uh, any anything that they want to find and haven't been able to find. We talk through search strategies, we talk through some of the nuances of the databases, and we figure out how can they get what they need. 
Okay, so that was Rebecca. Let's meet some of the others. This is Rachel Suffolk. She is the School of Dental Medicine liaison, just came in this year. Uh, I think her first day was something like five days before everything shut down. We started working from home. Here's Rose, who you already met. Uh, she's the School of Health and Rehabilitation Sciences liaison. Stephen Gabrielson, he's another person who joined us this year at maybe the worst possible time and um, is doing wonderfully. Uh, he's one of the School of Medicine liaisons, along with Francesca Yates. So she's also working with the School of Medicine, and both of them are interested in scholarly communication. So they're heading up our scholarly communication issues. If you are interested in things like open access publishing, um, in uh, you know, data reuse, you can talk to them as well as to me. We all work together. Rebecca Miller, who you just heard a video clip from, she's the School of Nursing liaison. This is Michelle klein Fetishin. She's the School of Pharmacy liaison. She is the only research and clinical instruction librarian. So everyone else, research librarian, she is clinical in her job title because she is actually a healthcare provider. Um, she is a licensed, uh, you know, pharmacy professional. And so she works with clinical patient care. Helena Vonville, she is the Graduate School of Public Health liaison. Jill Faust works with the Department of Psychiatry and also works with psychology as well. Mary Lou Clem, she is a sort of interprofessional education. So she was School of Nursing for a long time and now she really is the systematic review expert. So she does a little bit of everything. Um, but if you have questions about evidence-based practice, she's a wonderful person to talk to, use her instruction. Uh, you know, we send her the questions that need her expertise. And then Melissa Radajewski, she is the coordinator of data services. So she's part of my team, but she's also the IACOC liaison. So that's the animal care use committee. This is me, Helen Mary Sheridan. I'm the data services librarian. So I work with all schools. And then Carrie Iwima, she's in the molecular biology information services. She also works in data services, um, but she works again in different disciplines doing things like preprints, electronic research notebooks. Um, so she's the coordinator of basic science services, meaning she works with a lot of bench scientists. And her PhD is in, I want to say, neuroscience. Um, so she has that background, that professional background in bench science. If you want to talk to any of these people, um, well, if you want to talk to any of these people and you don't care who you get, you just have a general question. Uh, I showed you that Ask a Librarian form, so that's a great way to contact people or the chat box on the same page. You could also call 412-648-8866. That will go to the reference line. And then email medlibq at pit.edu. That's that uh, mailbox that goes to all the reference librarians. If you want to talk to a specific liaison, one of the folks that I just showed briefly, you can see librarians in their schools on the HSLS li Liaison Librarians page. Okay, this is more of the same, so briefly. Data services, I mentioned that uh, I am part of this team. So what we do is we offer more support, more consultations and customized trainings. Uh, and we often work hand in hand with the Liaison Librarians. So that if you need one of these customized trainings for a specifically public health audience, then we can work with Helena, the public health librarian, to deliver something that is customized both in content and form. Uh, we can help you organize and describe your research data. So that's really what I focus on. Uh, comply with data sharing policies. So that could be from a funder, from a journalist, uh, journal, from uh, an institute. To create effective data visualizations and to use electronic research notebooks. And everything we do is focused around creating a better system of scientific reproducibility. So making your data and your research more transparent, more reproducible. If you wish to contact us, you can email us at hslsdata at pit.edu. And then we also have a web page that's linked off of the main HSLS homepage. It just says data services. So that has information, links, and a calendar of our upcoming data classes for the fall. Molecular Biology Information Service, that's Carrie's team. So they support research. Uh, a lot of what they do is they license software that's used in precision medicine and basic sciences research. So if you want to uh, analyze specific genes, if you are doing protein biochemistry, if you are visualizing some nerve connection, you want to use the tools that the Molecular Biology Information Service licenses for you. 
So they do Wednesday workshops uh, where they show you how to use those tools, um, but also additional guest present presenter lectures. Um, and then consultations specific to bioinformatics queries. It's important to stress that they will not do your analysis for you. That's something that maybe sort of the bioinformatics core could do, for example. We can't do the analysis for you, but we can advise you on how to conduct an analysis, how to use software, where to go if you want to pay a service or a person to do it for you. We can be that hub. So Anseman Chattopadhyay is the Assistant Director for Mobile. Sri Chaparala is the Bioinformatics Specialist. And Carrie Iwimo already had a slide earlier, but those are the three people that work at the Molecular Biology Information Service. If you want to contact them, their email is hslsmoldb at pit.edu. Their webpage, which is also linked off the HSLS homepage, has links to software, calendar, online tutorials. They have a pretty big video library and more. Um, I know they run a very popular newsletter and they also have a blog, so you can subscribe to both of those from this webpage. And then, you know, we, we really like to work with people. Um, you know, we're all librarians because we enjoy and find value in connecting people to resources. So this quote from Carly B, you know, who's from the School of Pharmacy, HSLS has truly helped us, me engage with more pieces of literature than I could have found alone. The librarians go beyond your ask to not only thoroughly search all HSLS, but also through their own personal collection of materials to provide you a robust literature search. Uh, which is a really wonderfully inspiring quote. And I hope that we can all make our patrons that satisfied. Additional resources. We're coming to the end of our time, so I just want to point you in a couple more directions. So streaming media. We are all at home, not all of us. Uh, some of us have gone back um, and the joy of streaming media collections is that it's accessible to any place with an internet connection. So we have visual guides, video protocols, documentaries, recorded lectures, and other health sciences-based content. Some of that is produced in-house. So for example, the various guest lectures that have been at HSLS over the past few years, but also things that we license. So that's especially true for the video protocols. Um, and we also subscribe to collections that are focused specifically on coronavirus research. So that is accessible through the main page. And if you want to reach out to us through other channels, so we have social media, um, it's HSLS Pit at Instagram and Twitter, and then Pit HSLS, so it's swapped, on Facebook. Uh, from the website, you can sign up for our weekly classes and workshops email that announces everything that's coming up. You can check our website for news and announcements, uh, including but not limited to that calendar that I pointed out in the beginning. And then always, we are here for you if you have any questions. So don't hesitate to reach out to any of us individually or through that MedLibQ email or via phone. Uh, we are available for you. And with that, I'm available for questions. Okay, the page describing data management. Let me put that in the chat. That is our data services page. Um, if you go to the HSLS webpage, it's under services, under data services, but I will direct link it right here. So let me screen share for just a second. Here's the data services page from here. I would just click on getting started. And this is our homepage. So it talks a little bit about data management. Uh, here is a link to all of the newsletter articles that we've written. This is important. This is the upcoming data classes, and you can also access it right here, September 2020 classes. So you can see we're doing, well, we've already done introduction to R. And then here, this lists all of the available classes that are data focused that we can teach for you. Also there, um, if you are curious about data management plans, if you need to fill out one of those, uh, we have guidance for you and a link to DMP tool, which is how you get started. Some information about electronic research notebooks, and then a link to uh, COVID-19 research data. So there's a hub for that here. And the PIT data catalog. So if you are a researcher and you have data, data sets that you are sharing in a repository or you'd be interested in sharing, we can describe those data sets for the web 
and make them more discoverable and more accessible online. So for example, here is a data set. This is from psychiatry, I wanna say, where this researcher uh, put her data online on the Open Science Foundation. And we created this detailed description that is machine harvestable. So Google data set search, for example, can come in and index this and then more people can discover her research. Uh, and it has a link to the citation so you can read the publication as well as access the data. So if you want more in-depth instruction, I highly recommend checking out the class calendar. Um, and again, don't be afraid to request things. You know, we have a mission uh, to support instruction. So if you say, I want to learn how to search or I really want to buckle down and become a catalog master, you know, uh, send in a request and one of us will work with you and make sure that happens. But the painless PubMed class, I have taken it. I can say it is genuinely painless and uh, it's great for PubMed, but it's also great for just improving your search skills in general. So I have become a better user of every possible catalog because I took that class. Thank you all so much for coming. <laughs>